Nigeria Diaspora Television is here to interview Mr. Femi Kuti, who is in Johannesburg, to come and perform at the Delicious Festival 2017. Mr. Kuti, can you tell our viewers what brings you to South Africa? Well, we know what brings you to South Africa, but what else are you going to be doing apart from singing to your many millions of fans? First of all, I think it's very important we don't see ourselves with colonial structures. I think that's probably part of the problem. And I think I see myself as an African. Yeah, to make it easy so people know where you're coming from, Lagos, Nigeria. But I don't think we should carry it on our head heads. It's why we must promote Africa. Africa should it should be every African's dream to make Africa the envy of the world. And we have to understand that we're one. Our cultures and tradition are very similar. A bit different, but similar. And we should be thinking about building, not dividing. For example, I always talk about this. We should have a railway line from Lagos to Johannesburg. Can you imagine how beautiful that would be? Not those scrappy old railway trains that they have abandoned since the 19th century they bring to Africa. No, like the ones we see in Europe, moving at 370 kilometers an hour. This is, Africans should think big and develop big. Now what brings me to, Af to Johannesburg is, I'm bringing of course the music, always showing the beauty of Africa through music, always talking about what I already started talking to you about, unification, brotherhood, sisterhood. So important that we need to leave a solid foundation. Kind of one Marcus Gavi, Mark Comex, Martin Luther King, my father, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela, Biko, Mr. Biko, left for us to be able to have something to understand, to propel us positively into the future. So I do hope my music will give young people energy, good vibes, motivation, all those good things to be able to see a positive future and the need for them to think inwards into building Africa. I, I hope my performance will show all this tomorrow, the greatness of Africa through music. And uh, of course, uh, one cannot talk about femininity without your great hit song, Bang Bang Bang. Are you going to be belting those, that song out for us tomorrow? I don't think they will let me out of South Africa if I don't. <laughs> don't forget South Africa. 1998, it's almost 20 years now. I was thinking about that the other day. Yes, almost 20 years. They say time flies. And yes, I always remember Sun City, Kura Awards, South Africans freaked so much for that number, it was incredible. And when Nigerian banned, when the Nigerian government banned it, the South Africans promoted it on DSTV and satellite, so Nigerians got to watch it. And it, it just was that kind of crazy song that hit every club, every corner on this planet. It took me to heights that were unbelievable. So how would I... You know, they, they might arrest me if I don't... <laughs> if you forget to sing it. I'm sure something like that could happen. Okay. How we, dare we, I? Yeah, we look forward to that. But also, Mr. Kuzi, I mean, we've seen now that Nigerian music, especially the young guys, they've dominated the global stage. I know that there's always I would not. I, I will never say that way as well. Okay. Why do you say that? You see, when you talk like this, this is what brings division. Oh, Why don't you just say Africans are doing well? Right. If it wasn't for Maria Makeba, who set the international stage on fire, people like you, Masakela, wouldn't have come out. And my father, but Maria Makeba was, I believe, the first. Then you, Masakela, my father. And if they didn't set the stage, 
people like Yusundu or Angeliki Joe. Manu Dibango. Manu, uh, yes, sorry. My father, Manu Dibango, or Manu Dibango, my father, just simultaneously, something like that. I can't exact, I can't pinpoint who broke who into Europe president. first, but it was, I remember Maria Makemba Himasekela, my father, um, Manu Dibango. So many people were, I mean, that set opened the door for people like Yusundu, Angeliki Joe, um, Selif Keita, Baba Mao, myself, so many, I'm sure I've even left some names out. Oh, yes. And King Sonia Ade. Yes. So, we didn't see, and they never saw themselves, Yuma Sekela never saw himself as South African or Maria Makeba. She never spoke for South Africa. She spoke for Africa. Fela never spoke for Nigeria. He spoke for Africa. You see, every African that was excelling, they always represented Africa. They always knew they were a force for Africa. So I would not want you to raise that question because then you start to make Ugandans feel envious. And you, you, make, you belittle other peoples. But we should see it as, oh, One Africa. yes, if some people, some artists from a part are doing well, they're just opening the door wider for the future for Africa to excel. That's amazing. That's very generous. So people are not looking at them as solely that they're Nigerians. They're embracing them. They're supporting them. Africans are embracing them. And when they tour Europe or America, Africans go to watch their concerts. They don't say, oh, because he's Nigerian, I'm not going to. I'd rather go and watch my own artists than watch them. So people embrace them because they are from the continent. We just had an opportunity to attend a book review on your father called The Beach of a Life. It was written by a gentleman. Carlos Moore. Carlos Moore. And uh, amazing book. There was a lot of conversations about your father's shrine and singing in pigeon and all of that. How do you feel about such a tribute to your late father? My sister started the celebration festival, which is getting bigger. It's celebrated everywhere now, globally, in America, in Europe, all over Africa now, most countries, a lot of countries, not most, getting bigger by the year. We have symposiums in Nigeria, schools debates. Um, we have... Um, merchandising of t-shirts and all that people are doing on the internet and is where the Nigerian government will have loved for his passing to be end of that his historical fact he seems to have expanded from the grave and seems larger than life now which he was then I mean Fela was so big I mean he was incredibly huge. And if you did not live in Fela's times, you probably, that's why they say people like that are legends. Because stories just, they are unbelievable stories you hear about so things like he did. It was like to boxing. But yeah, it was music and he transcended his art. We were fortunate to see him. And being his son, I was there most times. And it was just incredible his confrontation with the soldiers or the police or the government or in prison. I mean, the way he, his perception of life. He, he truly was a gift. And so Mr. Goody, apart from the fact that you followed his part in music, what key lessons did you learn from him as a man who is so strong and so powerful? I learned courage. I learned to be honest, frank, sincere, to be myself. I knew immediately through listening to jazz, I could never be him. So it, I did play, I, I am playing music like he did. But I think every child likes to, every child or most children look up to their parents. And I was no different. My father was playing the trumpet, I wanted to play the trumpet. He was playing the sax, I wanted to play the sax. I loved my father. And unfortunately, as life is, when you tow the same path as your parent, people immediately start to compare. Which again, is, I, th I see this as wrong. I have been lucky and fortunate, but this is due to hard work. 
to survive so many negative things like you can never be your father, you can never produce his kind of music, you'll always live under him. And this, this is, these are things that just depress the child because the child doesn't see competition. The, the child sees, the child is just in love with his parent and just wants to do whatever the parent is doing and doesn't want the world to see it as competitive and unfortunately the world sees it like that. So I think I've been lucky to be able to still forge ahead and I remember my song Wonder Wonder, my father was still alive. Everybody said he wrote it for me. They never wanted to do justice. Anything I did, they criticized. It took me 10 years to break away. And luckily, Bang 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 came out a year after I passed, so nobody could give it to, nobody could say he wrote that album for me. And even when I got my first Grammy nomination, it was because I'm Felasson. The second one, yes, because I Yaikuti. The third one, they did not know, really know what to say. Then the fourth one, and probably when I, if I do win it one day, they will say, say yes, because it's, they will never want to give me credit for hard work that I've done. And I have arrived at this ad. I do a minimum of, till today, six hours practice every day. And if you, my playing, style of playing is so different from my father. But of course, you must see the similarities. This is a man I looked up to. This is a man that I respected so much. And this is a man I played under for so many years. So, and if I didn't look like him or sound like him sometimes, then we'll have to ask my mother some serious questions, don't you think? So when people come with all these big ideas, it really makes me more humbled and start to know that they have problems with themselves. And the problem definitely doesn't come from me because I will, I will not cease to respect him. And most importantly, they don't even know my relationship, the good times or the bad times with my father. And luckily, because of my mother, I wouldn't even say to the media many negative things I could say about my father. But I will never tell you he was perfect. I will never say he was a perfect. But people see him as such, so let them dream. I love him so much that I, I could sacrifice all that. And even if I did probably criticize him, people would think I'm being envious. But this is real feeling between father and son. And many people will know the history where I didn't speak to my father for a couple of years. I left his band. I left his band to find myself. This, was, the, this was my training. It, it brought me to be independent. And when I revolted to be independent, he himself did not understand my independence. And then it took him a couple of years to accept my revolt and understand I must be my man because if I fail it's it's my business so he had to support it like he rebelled against his father his father were they were Christian missionaries he said he many to go study medicine. yes and he was supposed to be religious himself he, he went totally the opposite way he did everything contrary to what he was brought up to do I wasn't that bad. So I think I've been quite a modest, good child. But I have to be, I have to sound like him. I appreciate sounding like him. Why? You want me to sound like Obasanjo? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you bring us to the question. It's interesting that your dad and uh, I think it's uh, Abiola and. Of the Sanjo, they went to the same school. No, they didn't. They were oh, they just in the same town. Oh, they were in the same town. They didn't go to the same. Okay. It's just a rumor. Um, Professor Shoinka is your uncle, right? Yes. So can you tell us about your relationship with Professor Shoinka? He's my father's cousin. Oh, you, are you guys close? Do yeah, we're close. Listen to your music. I he was at a concert early mid this year for. It was a concert by Lagos State Government. Yes. And he was sitting right in front of me. Okay. And I think he could not believe how much I had matured. And he was just, he clapped all night. Wow. And he was telling, people heard him say, wow, he's a great guy. 
I mean, he said, I said many things praising me, and people came back to tell me. It, I went to say, I said hi to him. I mean, we don't visit ourselves, but there is tremendous respect. I mean, he knows that I'm very busy, I'm touring, and our family isn't the kind of family where um, we don't pretend to be what we are not. So I will not lie to you that I go to see him every week, and which I don't. Um, if your children wanted to take up music, would you encourage them to do so? All my kids would be taught musical instruments. Whether they decide to take it as a profession, that would be left to them. I believe every human being wants to learn an instrument. And when your parents is telling you, are telling you, learn this, you are so stubborn, but when you grow up, you wish you learned that instrument. It's my duty as a father to give them that opportunity. Whether they take it up professionally, that is, that has to be their decision because I will never force them. Why it has to be their decision is I will not take any blame for anything that goes wrong in their life. I can only be their father. And when it's good, they take credit for it. When it's bad, they have to find out how they can rectify those problems. So you decide, when you decide your path in life, it must be your, it must be your decision. I know many people that become lawyers, but they don't want to be lawyers because their parents force them, or doctors and they don't want to become doctors, or accountants. There are people, I heard the story of somebody who wanted to be a cook, but he had to study economics and he wasted so many years. He's now a cook, and this is what he really wanted to do, he just wanted to cook. But because everybody in his home wanted him to be an accountant and he studied and he, he practiced this for so years and he was such a depressed person till he got the courage to just say, look, leave me, everybody, leave me. And he went to do what? And he's so successful. I believe he lives in Canada. He's Nigerian. He lives in Canada. Have but there's so many. Food? Yes. Impressive. And there are so many people like this who are forced to do what they do want to do marry who they do want to marry. They live other people's lives. Yes. So I will never do that to my kids. But I will give them, because they all, they look up to me. The same way I look up to my father. If I didn't teach them music, they will grow up and say, why didn't you teach me? This was a fight I had with my father. So I must make sure, and I will give, it, I will give them every opportunity. And if they don't even become musicians, they will know good music and be able to tell musicians, ah, I, know, I know a bit of chords and blah, 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 but it must be their decision.